So, um, before we start, let me ask you a question. What do you think about stories in games? Uh, we discussed it in the last presentation a little bit. Uh, but do you think sto games need stories? Do you think it's uh, good for players that uh, there are stories in games? Well, um, in the last century, there was uh, one visionary who basically thought about this question, and I kind of like his quote. Uh, but in fact, some games uh, don't need stories at all. Um, they just need interaction, they need uh, challenge, and they need uh, experience. Experience that the player will get whilst playing the game. The thing is that uh, players having experience, it transfers uh, into stories. Because humans, they have this ability to think in stories. Like we process all the information we got in stories. So I think that's why stories are quite important. And I think it's good uh, to be able to have stories in games. Sometimes we as a developers, we can put the stories directly in or just made the game in a way that it generates the stories. And it's actually the important question, how to tell stories. Like this is the question which humankind is thinking about for a long time. So we were learning how to say stories, act stories, write stories. And we are now uh, in the process of um, crafting the way how to tell stories in games. So. Um, my presentation today will be about uh, how I did story for one mobile game. Uh, my name is Jarek Kolar uh, and I did some games in the past. I worked in some studios and uh, this game, that effect which I'm gonna talk about today is uh, very unique to me because this is the first game I did uh, where I was doing only the story. I was not even part of the development team, I was just an external guy, so I was not doing anything else than just writing text and doing some paper stuff. So um, what we're gonna uh, hear today, uh, first of all I will speak about the effect one. I will go uh, into detail about the processes which I did um, to create a story and some examples. And then uh, short um, info about the data pick 2, how I changed the processes and uh, what was improved and what was not improved and then sum it up and then we can go on. So uh, that effect for those you, uh, who don't know this game, it's a shooter on mobile games uh, and it was uh, also ported to PC. Uh, obviously it's about shooting zombies, uh, but it has a story. So, uh, how I ended up in this situation? Uh, in 2012, I was working in Prague uh, on some other game, uh, in some big corporation, and uh, friends of my friends called me that uh, they would like some help from me. That they are working on an indie project and they would like um, a narrative designer or story writer to write them a few texts. Uh, so I was kind of interested because the work uh, which I was doing was not very creative. So I met with them. I kn know these guys uh, from the past. Lubomir Dikas is one of my designers from Pterodon, so we did many games together. And the game was quite good. They already have a prototype which was playable, it was working. Uh, and they had quite a lot of ambitions. They really wanted to make a best shooter on mobile phones. So uh, I said yes. Uh, and I agreed that I will write a few lines for uh, whatever they need. Uh, obviously, uh, they had some limitations. It was a just small team with uh, limited budgets. They were just financing it themselves. And for me, the worst part was that uh, they were already in the middle or towards the end of production. So they have already uh, the levels created. And so, uh, so it was not so easy to uh, do the story. 
So uh, what they gave me, what they, like what they had at the time was typical spaceship zombie apocalypse uh, concept, which if you would be asked to come up with, I think you came up with the same idea, which is uh, I am waking up as a player in a spaceship, uh, there are zombies, I fight for my life, uh, then I learn that the ship is going towards the Earth, and if uh, it lands there, the zombie apocalypse will uh, spread throughout the Earth. So I have to destroy the ship, and that's it. Uh, so it was not so great for me. Um, so what I did as a narrative designer in this role, uh, I did several steps, which I'm going to describe to you right now. So. Uh, these are the seven steps which uh, I will be describing in detail. And the first one is the story premise. Uh, every story needs a conflict, it needs some, something which, which is the core of the story. Which story apocalypse, fighting for your life, saving Earth, is quite good. There is a conflict, it's a big conflict. Uh, but obviously it's not very mm, original. So I came up with an idea to keep all the levels they've got, that uh, there will be a twist on the end, uh, and it will um, uh, it will turn out to be a fake. Uh, the situation: the player is um, basically a prototype which they are testing in some conditions, and they are basically setting up the situation. So you feel like you are saving the earth, but it's not the case. So the <coughs> the structure of the story. Uh, after this was st still the same, you wake up, uh, there are some zombies, you are, fight you are fighting for your life, then you learn about the earth problem, you are doing some more things, then it's all finished, you, are f you think that it's, uh, it's, it's over, but now they came to you saying, good job, uh, we tested your skills, now we will bring, uh, wash your brain and uh, we can do some iterations on, on you and uh, we can do the test again. And this is the point where you revolt, you fight back, and kill the guys, uh, and that's it. So without changing just a little bit, I was able to keep all the levels that they've got. It had some new meaning now, uh, and I was kind of happier about the, the promise of the story. So uh, second thing uh, which you need in a, uh, in a story our characters. Uh, obviously, uh, characters, they are basically creating the, all the things which are in the story. So you need to uh, put a lot of emphasis into, <coughs> into characters. Ideally, your characters uh, need to have some change. Or, uh, they need to have some motivations why they are um, doing what they are doing. So uh, what I've designed uh, and was player's character, uh, story arc. In the beginning he's just an uh, opinionless clone and he turns out to be a uh, guy who revolts and revenges against the odds of what uh, the situation is bringing to him. And uh, as I said, there was quite a budget limitation, so there were only two characters possible. So the second character of the story is the mad scientist who is basically, on the beginning, he acts as a guide. He basically tells you what to do, but then you find out that he's the main villain and you fight against him. Uh, and then, actually, there was another kind of character, which was the spaceship itself, which is communicating with you, uh, but it's more for the atmosphere. The third thing uh, which I uh, needed to uh, work on was the backstory. Basically, all the... Every story you are doing, uh, it, needs, um, it needs some setting. You need to know as a writer all the things which are happening in the world. And especially if it's uh, fiction, you need to work um, on the details, describing to yourself uh, what, what is going on there. So uh, I created a few pages of document with all the information, uh, which I was then using uh, later when I was doing the other things. Uh, so w one of the most important things was that uh, the scientists were there, uh, they were um, doing some non-ethical research and they find out some technology which they were able to animate dead bodies into living creatures.
creatures, zombies. Um, fourth thing, uh, which is important when uh, you want to write a story for a game, is uh, you need to know your gameplay mechanics. Uh, this thing is, I would say, quite underestimated amongst writers, uh, because this is something which is not common to the other media. Because in game, when you have a story, um, player is doing a lot of things, you are controlling him, um, and if there is, um, if, if the activities with, with, uh, the player is doing are not synchronized with the character of the, this player character in the, in the story, then uh, it doesn't work. So uh, the mechanics uh, the guys have uh, designed for the, for the game uh, was moving, shooting and interaction, which is pretty much perfect what you need for a uh, zombie apocalypse. But if the story would be about um, living some exciting life in some city and doing uh, a lot of activities, uh, these, these gameplay mechanics wouldn't be enough uh, to tell the story of, of such, a, such a person. So for that effect, these mechanics were good and it was also good that they were already working so I could really rely on them and not um, hoping that they may come or not. Another thing which you need to know uh, is the way how you are going to tell the story. Um, obviously there are ways, there are some dialogues, cutscenes, voiceovers. <coughs> uh, for that effect I designed uh, simple things, uh, mainly because of the budget, that uh, the ship is communicating with you, you have some system messages where uh, uh, the AI is telling you about uh, some, some information that you need to know. And the main core of the story is being uh, told by the communication between the player character and the professor. These two characters in the story are talking all the time through the radio. Uh, and then later uh, we've added these devices which are scattered around the levels. Uh, you can find them, you can read them, and they give you some additional information about the, about the backstory but they are not important for the, for the story itself. Fifth thing uh, which um, I did was uh, to, to make some structure for the whole story. Uh, good thing about this is that uh, there are many ways and methodologies uh, that you can use. Uh, there is one and I was quite interested uh, in this one which I found on the internet. It's basically um, it's a chart where on a horizontal axis you have time and on a vertical axis you have, in this case, challenge, but you can put also um, like violence or interestingness or um, new stuff. And then you draw some, some chart which is representing some ideal progress and you need to have also these peaks so uh, it's, not, it's not boring, static. Um, and then uh, you are basically dividing your whatever story level or depends uh, on which thing you are applying this, this method. You are dividing it to, into some, uh, some portions and as you can see you have some events which are happening. So this chart is basically taken from the Hollywood um, formula but I really liked it and I use it for my um, story structure design. So what I did is I took uh, the levels the guys have designed and I ordered them into this um, into this kind of chart and basically here are the setup, opportunity, new situation, progress, all the things which were listed in this in this chart. Uh, and then um, I wrote, which is not readable, basically short summary of what uh, what is happening uh, during this during this section of the story. Uh, so this was like a key point where the story was leading to, which gave me some kind of framework for some ideal flow of the story and some ideal pacing. Then because uh, I know uh, what gameplay mechanics I ha I've got at my disposal, I could list them like this uh, and then assign them uh, to, these, to these levels. So basically I put the gameplay mechanics there and here I could 
start putting uh, some situations in a way that uh, they would appear on the right place, in the right order. There will be changes between what the player is doing uh, and it would like flow nicely towards the end. So this gave me some kind of uh, framework of how the story would flow from the beginning to the end. And it gave me also a list of events, what I need to tell in each level. So uh, then I could easily come to level design itself. Uh, and this was ex exactly the thing that the guys needed from me to write objectives, hints, and basically all the texts which were in the levels. But you really cannot just start writing them from scratch. So I had to do all these other steps before. And because I did, I did them, it was quite easy for me to put them uh, into these levels. As I said, the levels were already created. So this is what I received, a map of the level. Uh, unfortunately, I was uh, quite distant from the team, so I hadn't had a chance to discuss it or play it in the 3D world. I just got this uh, crappy map. Uh, and uh, what I did is I put the objectives uh, which would appear and then I uh, draw some events which will be in, this, uh, in, in between which gave me pretty much a uh, good idea of what I need to write for the whole level. So once this was uh, finished and discussed with the guys I could start writing. <coughs> I used the, just the typical movie um, format which, is right, which our writers are using. Uh, this were the objectives which were happening and then uh, I basically put little dialogues. I really tried to be very, uh, very, mm, I tried to write them short and simple because when you are in the zombie apocalypse on a spaceship you don't talk uh, like in theater. Uh, and really try to use what I've defined about my characters, which were just two of them, luckily. Uh, I try to keep all their traits uh, in, in, these, uh, in these texts. So this, uh, this document then uh, got translated and uh, the guys at the development team, they, they received it and they just scripted the levels uh, in this way. So um, that was about the levels and the last thing was the, the email messages which were scattered around in these devices. Uh, this was actually not part of the original mobile version. It was added later for the PC version. Uh, and I got like a task to write three to 10 email messages per level. There were like 12 levels, so it was quite a lot. Uh, and I was really having a blank page of paper and trying to think uh, what I do. So I started brainstorming it. So I thought there could be some official messages that are about the ship itself. And maybe some hidden messages that would be connected to the game itself. So then I brainstormed that uh, the official messages would be about the owner of the ship, the journey, where it's going, the crew, the research. Uh, and like I basically uh, brainstormed. When I had some ideas of what it could be, then I've created some more characters that were uh, present on the ship, like the spaceship captain, uh, some officers, some whatever guys. I created uh, traits and descriptions of these guys, and then I could start writing the messages that these guys would be um, discussing or writing about. And then uh, it basically was supporting the backstory in the game. So all these things were done uh, and basically the guys who were doing the game, it was a team of five guys, they were working really hard and they finished it. And it got released in 2013. Uh, originally they uh, released it as a premium title, but because of the piracy mainly or 
some other reasons. They changed it into free to play. Uh, and it got some, I would say, good uh, criticism and reactions. And uh, later it was uh, ported to PC on, and released on Steam. So um, it was a good thing that it got finished. Uh, as a writer, I would say that uh, it was good that uh, we there was this uh, structure design which basically dictated the pacing of the game, uh, dictated the flow of the story. Uh, it was quite simple, everything was prepared, so the integration was quite smooth, there were no problems uh, in the way how it, it got created. And I had a good feeling about the backstory seeding, I was not really talking about the backstory specifically in the in the dialogues, but there were just few seeds over there, here and there, that were basically creating the idea of the of the backstory which I designed. Obviously, there were also some things which were not ideal. Uh, for me, the worst thing was the cooperation on distance, which was the new experience for me. I always worked uh, directly with the guys and the team together. We were discussing stuff, but this time I was first. Um, uh, in different city in the Czech Republic and then even further on the other side of the globe. So we were just changing emails and uh, the communication was not great. Uh, then obviously the thing which uh, is always bad uh, when Czech writer is writing an English text. I was writing it in Czech, then it got translated and then a lot of like, the writing disappeared. Um, so th this is really difficult for Czech person to write text in English. Uh, the best would be to have some uh, some person who would like Americanize it, or some native speaker who would like completely re re rewrite the text. But there was no time for that. Also, the voice acting was not perfect. Uh, I was glad that uh, they got enough money to hire some actors living in Prague, I guess, uh, some native speakers to, to record the, the dialogues, but still some American players were complaining that the acting is cheesy and not very good. And uh, very bad thing was also the fact that uh, there was no time to really polish the game. Uh, I basically wrote it, they've implemented it, and that was it. it they were, they were tweaking the gameplay stuff, but not the story because there was no, no time. So sometimes the texts are a little bit all over the place or not fitting to the situation that could have been better. And I think uh, if you've been here in the last presentation, that's why it's good to record the voices in some placeholder version, have it in the game and then play it with the text. And then after you are happy with it, then you can uh, record it for real, but obviously for this team, this budget, it was not possible. So, um, and then obviously because uh, it was a success, they wanted to continue. They asked me if I would cooperate again uh, on the next game. So uh, they were busy with uh, the PC version and I got a chance to start working on it in advance, which was a big plus. So uh, what we did right was that, uh, or what was easier, we placed the story of the new game in the, the same setting. Actually, it was just after the events of the first game, directly after the events. So the concept, the conflict was, you as a, some scientific prototype of, of a clone, artific artificially created, running around the ship and the military came in to like, clean up the mess and we are basically trying to survive. Um, so uh, there are more characters in the first game, there were actually two player characters but in fact uh, they had almost the same uh, lines and because it's first person view you won't see them so this time there were three uh, but the biggest improvement was that uh, there are some other characters which you can, between the missions on the base, which was a new feature as well, 
you can talk to them or sometimes you are going with these characters directly with, together through, throughout some missions so it so it adds uh, much more um, atmosphere or different feeling than just the solo player with some guy on the radio and uh, there are also some some other characters uh, also uh, because of the backstory and because of the advancement in the AI department, uh, the guys could afford to have uh, more characters, more like enemies. So there are less zombies and more monsters, which were basically uh, part of this like military uh, research or improvement um, creations. And obviously there were also uh, soldiers, which uh, had completely new type of gameplay because they were running around, uh, taking cover, shooting, so it brought uh, different gameplay mm, feelings and mechanics. Speaking of mechanics, uh, the guys were able to add more player verbs, so more activities which the player can do. So for example here in this picture there are three, three uh, mini games. Uh, and as I said, there are different types of enemies with different behavior. So um, the gameplay mechanic part got uh, extended. And then the most important thing, uh, finally uh, the level design was done in the correct order. So not like in the first game where the levels were done and then we were trying to implant some story into it. This time narrative design came first then level design on paper, then the writing, and then after all these things made sense, the levels were produced for the game. So this, this was definitely a big improvement in the work order, and it was uh, affecting the way how the result was done. So the structure of the story, I was still using the Hollywood chart, uh, but I've divided because uh, the idea was that uh, it will be much more, uh, much more bigger than the first game. The first game took like I don't know five to eight hours to complete. This one was supposed to be uh, much longer. Uh, it was designed to be free to play from the start. So um, the design of the story was that in the beginning there will be just few linear levels coming one after another uh, which will be focused on the story uh, quite short linear uh, which will basically set up the situation uh, set up the characters and then player will appear in a base here and then there will be some independent missions uh, which with their own, with its own uh, story so a lot of them uh, and then towards the end, much shorter than this, uh, seg segment of a linear finale, some kind of ending. So that was the concept of the structure. And then um, because I was supposed to come up with the ideas of the, of the levels, I was uh, kind of intimidated by the fact that I have no idea where it should be happening so I started to brainstorm I uh, went to internet and collected a lot of pictures of spaceships and spaceship layouts and I've created this layout of a spaceship which is basically having a shape of a spaceship and all these things are some reactors, engine rooms, storage, gardens, space command so uh, here, this red line is basically the story of the first game uh, where the character was traveling. And then I've marked areas where the Act 1 will be happening. This is where the base will be. These are the places where I will go be going uh, in the Act 2. And this is where the Act 3 will be happening. So it, it helped me to handle where the, these locations uh, will take place, how the, how, what flavor the levels can have, and how it could be done. Uh, so then, after I had this like spaceship design, 
uh, I could create this template, which is uh, the level design element. So I have some, these are the gameplay mechanics, the mini games. These are the types of enemies. I have doors, uh, stairs, whatever, walls, some gas thing. Um, this, is, um, this is basically my tool set for the level design. And then I could start placing uh, corridors and staircases and uh, objectives and whatever flow of enemies or player uh, on a paper level design. So either it was done like this when there was no level uh, created before or sometimes the guys have already something which they made uh, in the past or during the work. So I just applied the level design on the on an existing uh, on an existing map in in the similar way what we did in the first game. It's important to say that uh, these were not actual like layouts how the level should be done. This they were not recreated one to one in in three D. It just worked as a scheme for the artists and designers creating the level. So. Although this was square on this picture, on the end it could be completely different shape. But they just uh, kept the, the events and the obstacles which, which I've designed and which I was counting on uh, in the text. Another thing uh, which was new was the base. The base itself was kind of character on its own. Uh, it appeared in the very early after beginning in the Act 2. Uh, and this was this is the hub of uh, all players' operation. So basically, you are basically uh, fortifi fortifying yourself uh, inside of a spaceship. You are working on to have some things working uh, in your base. Some areas were uh, unlocked later after you've completed some missions, which were basically opening these things. So I've. <coughs> This picture helped me to uh, understand what what kind of events, what kind of story, what kind of um, situations there could be on this base. And although the final base looks completely different, it was very important for me to be able to connect it with the missions and uh, situations and characters. Uh, obviously, the game had much more stuff like items and dialogues and there were some generic levels where you were just protecting something and because I was uh, this was just a side project for me which I was doing overnight um, basically the team was, was using uh, the, the, the guidelines which are created for them and they created all these texts themselves, uh, I haven't write all the stuff which was in the game, so they basically tripled the amount of text which I've delivered to them to be able to uh, describe and put dialogues about things like whatever, some augmentations. So, so um, the game got finished recently, although uh, my texts were delivered like in June, the team again without me have been uh, working hard uh, on finishing it and they finished it and they released it last month. It's free to play so you can download it and you can try it. Uh, it's interesting to see free to play game which has some story uh, and you can judge how, how you like it or, or not. So uh, to sum it up, my tips for you, if you are gonna write some stories, uh, whatever media you'll be working on, games or books, first of all, make sure that you know what your story is about, what is your conflict. This is really important because without knowing this, you will fail on all the other things. Make sure that uh, you know your characters, their motivations, their progression, what they are, how they are changing. And it doesn't mean only the main characters. You need to know motivations of all the villains and side characters because most likely these characters, they are acting not because they are evil or bad. They just have some different motivations. And that's why they are doing what they are doing. 
Then uh, work on your backstory. Obviously, if you will place your story in a real world, then you just need to describe some kind of relationship between, between things. But if you are gonna do a fiction, then you need to come up with a, with a world, with all the things which the world is um, based on. So this could be more work. Then, this is for the, if you are working on a game, make sure that you have gameplay mechanics. And this is really important to be done on the beginning and you may have some core gameplay mechanics, which is really the mechanics which create the challenge for the player. Then there could be some flavor mechanics which are more for the storytelling. But it's really important for you to know it as a, as a writer. Uh, also, we need to define the storytelling mechanics. So the way how you will tell the story. Um, again, there are many ways, but you need to define what ways you will be using because then all the work in the level design and writing will be dependent on it. Uh, then I would advise you to do some kind of uh, structural design. Uh, the topic is quite wide, so um, I think you will need to read maybe some books or study some stuff if you want to know more about this topic. Uh, and then uh, you can start doing level design. Level design, the basic rule is that uh, gameplay should come first. So whatever decisions you need to do, it really needs to support gameplay. Obviously, if you have some kind of narrative guideline, a narrative framework, which you need to fit to your level, this would be easy for the level designers to keep, and then they have freedom to do whatever gameplay stuff they want to do. And then, writing itself, for me, is the last thing. And when you did all the, th all the steps before in write, the writing itself should be very easy. So, unless you are doing uh, some complicated storytelling RPG game where probably you should start the writing, or I don't know, I've never done any of this. So, these are my tips. Uh, I have also some uh, tips for the resources uh, that you can read. So, this, book's from, this book from David Freeman uh, is very good about building characters, building emotions. I would say at least the first half of the book is great. Uh, so I recommend reading it. Then this book, uh, it's more for the other uh, members of a team, not the writers itself, because it basically summarizes in a very short way all the things which the writers are doing. So it's good for producers, designers, programmers um, to, to understand this. It was basically uh, written by Ivan Skolnik, uh, which I worked with in Hangar, uh, and it looked like a frustrated book by a, design, by a writer who really wanted the other team members to know what they are doing. I think it's very good. And the last thing uh, I would recommend is basically an internet article by this Persian designer uh, who worked in Funcom. Uh, and this is, about, uh, this, this is one of the articles which describes the, the Hollywood structure thing uh, which I was talking about and maybe you can read just this one and it will, uh, it's quite nicely described. So these are my suggestions for your reading, for your education and I think that's it. Yeah. Tak, ruku nahoru, kdo má dotaz, nebo dotazy. Raz, dva, takže tady. M můžete se klidně ptát i česky, jo? Dobře, tak já to řeknu česky, to bude jednodušší. Uh, myslíš, uh, viděli jsme teda jako ohromný množství práce, uh, kterou si na tom odved. Mě by zajímalo, jestli si opravdu myslíš, že pro tady ten konkrétní typ hry, uh, Ať, ať to vezmeme daný tou platformou nebo, nebo tím, že je to free-to-play hra a podobně. Jestli si myslíš, že opravdu tam ten příběh byl 
tak důležitý, nechat to tam prostě jako... No, vypadalo to, že jako do, do, nějaká velká část toho budžetu šla právě na, na ten, na ten narrativ. A jestli máš nějaký, nějakou třeba zpětnou vazbu od, od recenze hráčů, jestli prostě opravdu to byl ten, ten motivátor k tomu, aby prostě ty, ty lidi to hráli a prostě zapli tu hru po druhý. Um, so. I think this kind of games, uh, it's good that they have story. Um, I think it's always good, even if the game is about shooting zombies and about the gameplay challenge, that it has some kind of framework which motivates you or which like sets the atmosphere, sets the tone, and gives you some reward at the time. I think that's very good. Uh, whether it was like well perceived by the players uh, or critics, I don't know. Uh, it's maybe a question for some game journalist. Uh, and in terms of budget, I would say that it wasn't that uh, difficult because I was uh, doing all these things uh, just for free for the guys because I was working somewhere else and I was not able to be employed by some other subject. Uh, and. Uh, Voice recording, uh, it's, it's part of the atmosphere, it's part of the, the experience, uh, so I think it fits to, the, to it, so it's not a wasted um, investment, I would say. So, my opinion, but I'm really game developer who really likes uh, atmosphere and the experience, for me it's essential. That games like this, if, it, if they are presenting some realistic setting, realistic situations, that they have some, some story, some meaning. So my take on it is that yes, it's essential that this has to have a um, story. And I wouldn't play free-to-play game which is just about, I don't know, clicking and seeing the numbers going up because uh, this for me is just a motivator, like short-term motivator. Uh, it's, it's good that there are these mechanics, but I would like to have some bigger picture. I would like my progression in the game leading somewhere. So that's my opinion, but I may be wrong. I, I actually don't do free-to-play games at all. This was just coincidence, and on the beginning it wasn't free-to-play. So. And then I had an idea that maybe doing the free-to-play game with this approach would maybe change the perception of the way how these games are done or could be done. So that's why I enjoyed it like this. Some other questions? Oh, yes, uh, thank you. Many thanks for, for this talk. And uh, you, you just spoiled my, my question, which was basically how did you calculate how how much they should pay you. Uh, but you just said that, that you were doing it just for, because they're your friends. I'm not interested in the, in the actual money itself, but on the, on the reasoning behind, okay, I have to do this and this and this, and this will take me some time or some uh, talent or something. And second, did the, the team understand that in order to write those dialogues, I understand that they only wanted you to, to write some dialogues, put some text there, you had to create a lot of things that would not be in the final game, like creating the background or creating the character's motivation and all these things that do not really appear in the game and that are really time consuming, of course. Um, yeah, I think this is a topic for a like, producer or team leader who is like planning the budget. You should understand uh, the cost. Uh, because you do a texture, it needs to be paid, you need a recording of a line, it costs some money and storytelling is also uh, some work which needs to be paid. Uh, so I think this is really a part of the production job to like, calculate it, to understand what, what, it, what it is, Deci deciding whether the game needs it or not. You can decide we have these like uh, photorealistic textures or we don't have textures at all. It's just a decision either it's, it's a production decision and also um, 
creative vision decision. So I think uh, this needs to be addressed um, and then decided. Like, uh, and uh, obviously, they wouldn't have enough money to like pay for that. That was my contribution to this project because, as I said, these guys were my friends, so I really wanted to support them. Uh, and the second thing was that I was not allowed to work for hire, so it was easy. And I really enjoyed writing, so that was cool. We have some other questions. Jestli nejsou dotazy? One more, if I can. Just is there any estimation how much time did it take to make the whole design process that you made? Uh, no, I don't have any estimation. I was not writing down the hours. Uh, the main problem which I had was that because I was working on it uh, alone, at home, during nights, was that uh, after all my family was shipped to bed, uh, I started working on it, but it took me an, every time an hour before I get into it. Uh, and then I was only able to work for it for some time. So uh, I burned a lot of hours by just like preparing before I did anything. Uh, and yeah, I don't know, I haven't calculated it. So was it, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, half a year or a year or a month or? Uh, f f the first game I would say six months of, I don't know, from time to time in the v working in the evening and the, sec uh, and the second game maybe a year. Um, but I don't know, I, I really wasn't like writing down the hours. But the thing is, uh, when you approach it structurally that you do these steps in the order which I did, I have a feeling that it's much more efficient than if you stand in, run, in front of the white page, blank page, and think and write, you know, lines, then delete them, and then, you know, I think this would be much more time consuming, and I would probably wouldn't be able to do it at all. So I, it really helped me to work, work it, work on it in this in these phases. Um, and I don't know uh, how much time we have. Thank you. Tak a díky moc asi i tobě, Jarku.